The world's longest undersea tunnel, known as the Channel Tunnel, is a rail tunnel that passes beneath the English Channel and connects France and England. The 50-kilometer Channel Tunnel is made up of three tunnels, a central tunnel for services and security, and two tunnels for rail traffic. The tunnel connects Sangat, near Calais, France and Folkestone, England, and is utilized for both passenger and freight traffic. Channel Tunnel has the longest underwater section of any tunnel in the world. In today's video, we are taking a closer look at this technological masterpiece and how it has contributed immensely to the transportation world. Let's dive straight in. In 1986, the United Kingdom and France brought the long-discussed idea of building a tunnel beneath the English Channel back to life. A group of British and French companies and banks funded the project privately. The Anglo-French company running the tunnel is called Eurotunnel. A rail tunnel was selected over proposals for an extremely long suspension bridge, a bridge and tunnel link, and a combined rail and road link. On both sides of the Strait of Dover, excavation started in 1987 to 1988 and was finished in 1991. The official opening date of the tunnel was May 6, 1990, when it was named one of the seven modern wonders of the world by the American Society of Civil Engineers. To connect the Channel Tunnel with London and enable even more international passenger traffic between mainland Europe and the United Kingdom, the Channel Tunnel Rail Link, CTRL, also known as High Speed One, was opened in 2007. The 108 kilometers, approximately 67 miles, High Speed Rail passes beneath the Thames. Trains operating there have a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour, that is 186 miles per hour. The issue of people sneaking onto trains as passengers in an attempt to enter the United Kingdom, many of whom are from Eastern Africa, reached crisis proportions in June and July of 2015. When attempting to enter England through the tunnel during that time, at least nine people lost their lives. In an attempt to discourage migrants from trying to cross, the United Kingdom and France increased security measures. Just fasten your seatbelt. You're about to see what the inside of the Channel Tunnel looks like. The three parallel tunnels that make up the Channel Tunnel are not linear. Rather, they gently arc left and right or up and down. They do this for them to run through the strata of chalk. The tunnels are 45 meters below the ocean floor on average. The width of the two bigger tunnels is 7.6 meters. They can accommodate a double-decker bus because they are high enough. The trains change lines at two locations beneath the sea known as crossovers, where the larger tunnels merge. These crossovers are as long and as wide as a cathedral. They are underwater caverns. At their closest point, the UK and France are separated by approximately 21 miles. Nonetheless, the three tunnels span 35 miles, connecting to inland terminals located in Folkestone and Calais. Travel times between the UK and mainland Europe have significantly decreased thanks to the Channel Tunnel. Before the tunnel, traveling from London to Paris by train and ferry took about six or seven hours. The same trip can now be completed by train in 2.5 hours. The tunnel is now a vital piece of infrastructure for freight, business, and tourism travel. Indeed, this is what technological advancement is all about. Let's unfold more information. Furthermore, in the event of an emergency, the service tunnel permits passenger evacuation as well as access for maintenance and emergency rescue teams. It provides access to the infrastructure's ventilation system as well. For maximum safety, it is thus maintained in an air overpressure state and is shielded from fumes in the event of a fire in one of the railroad tunnels. Vehicles drive on the left in the service tunnel, where a special transport system was designed for them. To arrive at the incident scene as quickly as possible, this multifunctional system is utilized for maintenance procedures and emergencies, Talking about vehicles, what kind of vehicles drive in the channel? Let's find out. A unique wire-guided service tunnel transport system vehicle consisting of two driving cabinets at each end and a central module devoted to maintenance or emergency services is one type of vehicle used in the service tunnel. Another type of vehicle used for maintenance is an electric or diesel-powered car. The channel tunnel was built with over 36,000 state-of-the-art and other systems installed in its three tunnels, all of which are fully connected to various pieces of equipment. Every rail tunnel has two continuously welded rails set on precast concrete supports, also known as slider blocks, which are set into the concrete track bed. The tunnel walls are equipped with cooling pipes, fire mains, signaling apparatus, and cables. The cooling plants at Shakespeare Cliff in the United Kingdom and Sangat in France supply water to the cooling system. The Eurostar and rail freight trains, among other trains that use the tunnel, 
receive their traction power from the 25,000 volts overhead catenary, which is also used by the shuttles. Sections of the catenary have been separated to facilitate phased maintenance. On either side of the channel are substations that supply the electrical power for the trains, lighting, drainage pumps, and tunnels. The system as a whole can be powered by the other side when one side loses power. Certain fixed equipment, like the lighting system and the doors that open between the service tunnel and the rail tunnels, can be manually operated in the tunnels or controlled from the rail control center. Numerous fire safety systems, such as the four safe stations within the rail tunnels and additional detection systems, are positioned at various locations throughout the tunnels, as well as in the technical rooms of the tunnel. So, are there possible challenges faced or facing the channel tunnels? Let's find out. Now, with the opening of the underwater Seikan Tunnel in Japan, tunneling poses a significant engineering challenge. The high hydrostatic pressure from the sea above, combined with the weak ground conditions, poses a serious risk to health and safety when building underwater tunnels. Another problem for the tunnel was time. Since it was privately financed, a quick payback was crucial. The mining industry had a great deal of experience digging through chalk, but the underwater crossover caverns presented a complex engineering challenge. The UK cavern was excavated from the service tunnel ahead of the main ones to save time. The French one was modeled after the Mount Baker Ridge Freeway Tunnel in Seattle. The primary tunnel boring machine drives were equipped with precast segmental linings, but two distinct approaches were taken. On the French side, high-strength reinforced concrete or cast iron bolted linings sealed with neoprene were used. On the English side, speed was the primary requirement, so cast iron lining segments were only bolted in geologically weak areas. Five segments plus a key were utilized in the French rail tunnels, compared to eight lining segments and a key in the UK rail tunnels. A grout curtain shaft measuring 55 meters, 180 feet in diameter and 75 meters, that is 246 feet, deep was utilized for access on the French side of the structure. The new Austrian tunneling method was initially used in the chalk marl at a marshalling area on the English side that was 140 meters, 459 feet, below the top of Shakespeare Cliff. The land tunnels on the English side were driven not from Folkestone, but from Shakespeare Cliff the same location as the marine tunnels. The platform at the foot of the cliff was too small for all the drives, and tunnel spoil was positioned behind a reinforced concrete seawall, despite environmental protests, as long as the chalk was placed in a contained lagoon to prevent chalk finds from spreading widely. The Foster Yeoman Coastal Super Quarry at Glensanda in Loch Linnea on Scotland's west coast provided the Scottish granite aggregate used by the precast lining factory, which was located on the Isle of Grain in the Thames estuary due to space constraints. The French side used earth pressure balance tunnel boring machines with both open and closed modes because of their higher water permeability. The first five kilometers, three miles of the TBM's operation were closed, but after that, they bore through the chalk marl strata as open machines. By doing this, the impact on the ground was reduced, high water pressures could be tolerated, and grouting ahead of the tunnel was not necessary. A total of five tunnel boring machines, TBMs, were needed for the French endeavor. Two primary marine machines, one mainland machine, the short land drives of two kilometers allowed one TBM to complete the first drive, then reverse direction and complete the other, and two service tunnel machines. Faster open-face TBMs were made possible on the English side by the simpler geology. Six different machines were used, three of them were for the land tunnels, and three of them started digging from Shakespeare Cliff. The UK TBMs were driven sharply downward and buried outside the tunnel as the undersea drives were completed. After that, an electrical earth was created using these buried TBMs. Following their completion of the tunnel, the French TBMs were disassembled. On the English side, there was a railway with a gauge of 900 millimeters, which is 35 inches, was used during construction. There have been slight improvements in the overall economy since the tunnel's opening. The Euro Tunnel is a profitable transportation option that is not impacted by bad weather. However, the high cost of the building did cause a delay in profitability and businesses that were involved in the tunnel's early operation and construction had to rely on government assistance to pay off the debt that had accrued. These projects are essential to strengthening regional economies because they increase trade and connectivity, as well as provide more opportunities for tourism and leisure. To ensure the preservation of coastal ecosystems, environmental considerations ought to continue to be the primary focus of these projects. For seamless connectivity and effective transportation systems, upgrading current infrastructure and carefully planning tunnel integration are essential. Feel free to drop us your thoughts in the comment section. Kindly like and subscribe to this channel for more interesting tech updates. Thank you for watching.